What's going on guys? I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Welcome back. Today I'm going to go over a question I get all the time and it's what tools do I need to get started woodworking? Today I'm going to give you five tools that I started with plus a bonus. Stick around till the end to see what that is. All right guys, so when I first started woodworking, I really had no clue what I was doing. Um, it kind of derived from somebody wanting a shelf made out of a pallet, so I made that and it kind of evolved from there around 2013 or so. And my first tool was actually borrowed from one of my friends, it was a miter saw. So that allowed me to cross cut things and um, just basically get rough shapes in the pallet wood to make the rustic furniture and shelves and stuff I was making. But the first tool I actually bought myself was this sander right here. Um, I, it still works fine, I just kind of graduated, I got a festival stuff now. Um, it doesn't vibrate as bad, but this works just fine. And I actually still use this sometimes to take off rough stuff. Um, it allowed me to smooth things out, obviously. It's a lot faster than hand sanding. So the number one tool I suggest you get is an orbital sander. So number two on the list, I'm gonna count this as one tool, a drill, and an impact driver. Typically when you buy them, they come in a set, two batteries, a charger, and the two pieces. So it's really handy to have two, so you can drill with one drill your hole, and then have your screw tip in the other and drive your screw in with that. Um, this is actually my first set. I love Makita stuff. Milwaukee's awesome too. Ryobi, whatever you can afford to start is, is great. Um, I've since moved up to the brushless version of this, and I swear if you bind this thing up enough, it'll probably tear the body off before it, it stops. No, just kidding. It actually has a safety feature on there to stop before you break your wrist. But um, second tool, drill and driver. All right, tool number three on the list, a circular saw. I would say above the brand of the tool, probably the blade, quality of the blade would be more of a concern than spending a whole bunch of money on a saw and not buying a good blade. Um, you do wanna make sure like the plate is nice and firm. These Ryobi ones are pretty great. This is uh, about a hundred dollar saw, I think, something like that. It was actually a gift to me. I still use it quite a bit, but not as much as since I got my track saw. So this is basically still a circular saw, but it actually rides on a track like this here. And this can pretty much take the place of a table saw. You can rip down plywood with it, rip boards, cross cut boards um, with a lot better accuracy. It's a plunge cut, so it falls down into itself there. Um, I do recommend changing the blade from the stock one on here unless you're only gonna cut plywood. This one's a little bit thicker blade. And I'll leave links to all this stuff down in the video description below for you guys. So basic circular saw, if you wanna upgrade and just dive right in, track saw. This is probably my most favorite purchase tool that I have to date. Tool number four has to be a jigsaw. A circular saw is great for cross cutting or ripping boards, but it can only cut in a straight line. A jigsaw can go in all kinds of different patterns. It's basically a mobile bandsaw. So you can cut out circles, patterns for things, arms for chairs, all kinds of different stuff. But again, with this, I would say, spend your money on blades rather than worrying about spending a whole bunch of money on a saw. I believe this one was like 60, 80 bucks, I'm in that area. You get them a little bit cheaper. Um, I like this kit from Bosch. It works really well. I'll leave a link to that for you guys as well. So tool number five on the list is probably not essential for beginning woodworkers, but if you wanna take your work to the next level and get some more detail in it, a router would be a great tool for that. So they have all kinds of different routers. These two are plunge routers. This is a palm router. I have a router in my router table that is a plunge router and has a fixed base, so that's nice. It's a little more versatile. I would say my most used router is probably my palm router because I can just grab it real quick. It's easy. It's not big and bulky like these. I can run a round over around a table, cutting board. I have a small bit in there right now with a really tiny bearing to get into tight corners. Um, with this bigger one, I mostly use that for slab flattening, or right now I have a deal on here that goes on my track for my track saw. So I can hook that up to like this slab here I'll be using it on and cutting a slot for a C-channel to sit in to make the slab less likely to flex. Um, and stuff I use this one for would be like bigger roundovers, chamfers, and stuff like that. Again, as far as brand goes, they all pretty much work. As you can see, I don't really have a preference as far as routers go. These two were given to me. They work great. This is a really old Makita that is just still a powerhouse. Um, this one's a two peak horsepower Craftsman, works great. This one's a DeWalt, I have a Bosch in my router table and it works amazing as well. So I'll leave links to the newer versions of these because these are actually all three really old routers. So I'll leave newer links to these for you guys in the video description. All right, well that's it. Just kidding, told you I had a bonus for you. So I would say the sixth tool, one of the most important tools I use all the time is a moisture meter. 
When I first started, I had no idea that it mattered how much moisture was in the wood. And that's a mistake a lot of people make. They'll go to Home Depot, buy green construction grade lumber, build a table and be really disappointed in a few months when the weather changes and it looks like a taco. So this tool right here uh, is about 35 bucks. I'll link it also. Um, it's made by General Tool. You just turn it on, you set it on the wood and it gives you a percentage rating. You don't really wanna use any wood for furniture grade stuff above 12 to 14% is what I usually try to shoot for. Around six to eight is probably the best, but sometimes you can't attain that depending on where you live in the country. I know there's a ton of videos out there just like this one, but I kept getting the questions, so I figured it'd be fun to show you guys what I started out with and continue to use today. You don't need to spend a bunch of money on tools to get started woodworking. Just get what you can afford and get out there and start making stuff, and the rest will come along the way. If you guys liked the video, please like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. I also wanted to let you know that I have my shirts and hats in stock on my website, walkersww.com, and stickers, all that kind of stuff. I really appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you on the next one.